Brutus. You got your first box of friend mail. You got treats. Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. This video is a little bit of, let's say, it's going to be consisting of a couple different things. Um, the first thing it's going to consist of is I'm going to open up a, a box of friend mail that I have received. And then we're also going to go through some bins that I have had in my garage for, Mark, how long have these been in the garage? At least a year. At least a year of un unlisted inventory stuff that I bought and put in bins and I may just forgot about. So um, that's what this video is going to be about. So I hope that you'll enjoy it. Um, we are all, you know, in staying at home and I mean, I did put a little bit of makeup on, but it is what it is. But let me go ahead and open up this first little box full of fun friend mail. I did get a card and a box. I'm going to open up the card first. Well, I did open it up, but I and I've read it because I have no patience, but it's from Maria and it says for morning's first light to evening's last star. And it has just a beautiful little sentiment in it so that she's going through and cleaning out some of her stuff as am I, uh, and time to reorganize everything. So that's what we're doing. We're going to try to do that today and get some of this old stuff listed. So thank you, Maria. And Brutus is here too, as you can hear. And it's good that you're here, Brutus, because this box here is from A Vision in Vintage Co. She's got a YouTube channel. I'll link her channel below. Check it out. She's found, She finds some fun and unusual things, and I like that about her. But she addressed this envelope, and it says, Open Before Easter, but look who it's addressed to. Brutus Pate. Brutus! You got your first box of friend mail. He's so excited. So I'm gonna open up the box here and then I will show Brutus the goodies that he may have gotten on the inside. I know Brutus, I can't wait either. Oh fun, oh my gosh. Okay, so these aren't for Brutus. So I will show you these first and I'm gonna let Brutus out. Because if I don't, well, we all know what Brutus will be doing the entire time. I'll let him back in when I get to his fun little portion. But look at how pretty this packaging is. That is adorable. So, I mean, this just goes to show you, you don't have to have the, the, the tissue paper and all that kind of stuff. You can just put your stuff in a little bag and put a little bow on it. It's adorable and I love these. These are little Easter eggs that you can use in decor. And they have me untied this little bow here that I will reuse. It's just a little wired bow. But there are these little eggs that you can hang from a tree. Okay, so here is a Vision and Vintage Co. specializing in uncommon vintage. And she has an Etsy shop. She has an Instagram and Facebook and a YouTube channel. So this is her card a vision and vintage co she does find a really lot of cool and unique things which i my little heart likes it says misty hope you're well so sad we couldn't do a collab shop together which that's going to be in the works once we can you know leave our homes hope brutus loves the cookies and you enjoy the easter items best wishes to you and your family so make sure that you check out her youtube channel and show her some love and some appreciation, especially in these times. You know, a lot of YouTube creators are, you know, putting out a lot of content because, I mean, we're bored too, and you're bored, and so let's all be bored together, okay? So you can, you know, watch their videos and, and subscribe and show them a little bit of love and leave a comment. All right, the next little bag here, I'm just going to tear it open. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! babies oh my I love these I love these I think I can just use one of these eggs the little egg holders look at you little bunny see this is just a simple little craft that I still would never be able to do I love this look at how these they're just fun and look at their little googlies their little tails Thank you so much. I absolutely adore these. 
So I'm gonna add those to my little, my little uh, Easter, well, my many Easter spots. All right, so this must be Brutus's treats. And I'm gonna open up the, the bubble wrap and then I'll let him back in. And we'll get his reaction to his treats. Thank you so much. Brutus is something else, let me tell you. He is, you know, a Jack Russell Terrier. He's full-blood Jack Russell Terrier. He's about 13 years old. So he's a he's an old man, but he is just as spunky most of the time as, as ever. Oh my gosh, look. She made homemade dog treats for Brutus. Really? Look at that. Okay, well. He's sitting at the door, so I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and we'll test these out. Brutus, you got your first box of friend mail. You got treats. Okay, let me get one out for you. Here's a little heart. Oh, you gonna dance? Dance for your treat. Oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll give it to you. Oh, do you like it? I think Brutus approves. Thank you so much. All right, so now we're getting into the portion portion of the video of me going through bins like this that have been out in the garage for oh, probably over a year. Inventory that has been sourced at the bins at various places that I just kind of put in the bin and forgot about. Now this is right up my alley and I wish I had more of these, but these are the little Cabbage Patch Kids, little vintage toys. Now this one is, I think this one's from McDonald's, 1994. I think that they gave these out with that are, don't have the, you know, articulated legs as a McDonald's toy. And then, but this one is one that, you know, that you could buy at the store. And I don't know if there's a date on it or not, but it has the reticulated legs. Somewhere there's a date on here, but it's 1980 something. Articulated or articulated? Ar articulated. Artic what does reticulated mean? See, this is why he's here because, but maybe you guys don't want him here because then he will um, correct all of my vocabulary mistakes. But reticulated? I think articulated is when you speak, reticulated is when you can move. Okay. Reticulated. Mr. Smarty Pants. What? Is it articulated or retarculated? Anyway, the legs move. The arms and legs move. We don't need to get hung up on the proper pronunciation. 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 You know what I mean. All right. The next thing is a... Another thing that's so fun. This is a vintage Cabbage Patch doll. In her original clothes her little hat and her shoes um, and her little diaper. Now the way that you can tell the dates on these guys are by their butts. And this one is signed Xavier Roberts and it's 1985. So the, the little date is on there, little behind. Did you just look up what the, he just Googled articulated or reticulated. Articulated. It's articulated. Articulated is having two or more sections connected by a flexible joint. I know that you all probably already know that and have known that and are probably looking at me like I am out of my mind, but articulated. I'll forget it tomorrow, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so her little pants are a little, the elastic is shot on her little pants, but she is dated 1985. So she's an original Cabbage Patch doll in all of her original clothing. We'll get her real head. And we did clean her up. We got her from the bin, so she was a dirty girl, but we did clean her up and she's in great shape. So this will get listed on eBay as well. And then I do well with these. I, I seems like I have sold almost every single one of these little salad things. This one has like a holly berry design on each end and these didn't have a brand on them and I haven't looked any of this stuff up but these are aluminum. They're very 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 lightweight so I can just type in aluminum salad serving spoon set holly and then see what I can find but they're very pretty and things like this you know I pick up at the bins 
or I did pick up at the bins. I mean, it, if I don't sell it, then, then I'll keep it. It's just pretty. So there's that. This is something that we had found from an estate sale. And we haven't listed it yet because we've been wanting to find a green light bulb to go in it. I think that you can, we just probably just need to try to order one. But it is this vintage 7-Up can lamp. And I have sold other 7-Up lamps. We went to an estate sale and the person had um, retired from 7-Up bottling company and had a bunch of promotional things and I still have more than I need that I need to get listed but this works we did put a regular light bulb in it and it does work but it's supposed to have a green light bulb no shade just the light bulb itself and it's got this really fun uh, switch to turn it on it's in great condition and weren't these selling for like 70 50 to 75 dollars or something like that we we need to find a green light bulb it we can sell it without the green light bulb but it, having the gr a green light bulb in it will sell a little bit better all right and then this is something that i picked up at an auction it was in a box lot at an auction just kind of thrown in a box it is an electric hot dog cooker it's made by presto and believe it or not now this has been in my garage for over a year so the prices could have changed it could be worth nothing at this point i will look it up again it is it, it, you could cook your hot dogs it's a hot dogger. I mean, this could be kind of a cross-marketable thing. Some people like to collect um, weenie dog things. And I don't know if it works. We have been brave enough to try it, but maybe we'll maybe we'll try it and see if it works. How do you, oh, you open it like this? So you just stab your hot dogs to the, in those little coils and plug it in. And it sends electricity through the hot dogs. And it sends electricity through the hot dogs. So that might be the best hot dog you'll ever have in your life. But when I last checked, these were selling for like $25. And I picked it up. It was in a box lot of things at an auction. All right. This next item is, I probably picked this up at Goodwill. I think we've already taken the price tag off. This is like an old technology thing or an older technology thing. But people do use these old iPads. A lot of times their kids will use them. It just has a secondary thing. This is the Mag Stealth for iPad 2, 3, and 4. It's brand new in the package. It's just the stand and cover. So these, when you can get them cheap enough, they, they, they do sell. It's just been in my garage forever. All right, these are really pretty cool. These are going to take a little bit of time. I think Mark started looking up some of these, but it's an entire bag of Swatch Watches. Do you all remember Swatch Watches? This is the one that I actually had. And this, it, but it's, some of these are in not good condition at all. They need new bands. This band is completely rotted off. This is the one that I had back in the day. This was this wasn't the one, but I had one exactly like this. This is the thing that I love to see. You all remember these? What were these called? Swatch keepers or? But you put them over the face of your swatch watch. Oh my gosh, it's memories. But then I also remember when you were dating a boy or dating a girl and you were, you would switch swatch watches. Was that a thing? Because Mark and I would, did we switch swatch watches or was that before we? I think it was before our time. I think that was before our time. Like in, when I was in middle school, you would switch swatch watches with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Sometimes you might do that and sometimes you might just switch the bands. So that was fun. But there's all different kinds. Oh, and those swatch guards. That's what these were called, swatch guards. And you could take them off. And then I personally liked mine twisted. And then you could get two different colors and twist them together. Yeah. And then there's this one. Again, the bands are not in the greatest condition in some of these. But I think our best bet for these would be to lock them together and just sell them as one. He's sitting, he's sitting there going, hmm. But I'm thinking that's probably our best bet because, I mean, there are bits and pieces of some of the, the bands. But we'll see. We'll let Mark. Mark, this will be your project. You can put these by your chair tonight and you can just search away. But there is an empty case in here and then this one is in the case. And I want to say this one was probably the, the most valuable one the time that we had looked and then also in here now these can do well too they're not swatch watches 
there's two Mickey Mouse watches and the the watches themselves the bands don't really matter as much the watch faces themselves are the ones that that do pretty good this one is Zorro and this one is Howdy Doody they don't work but they could just need batteries and you know but we would we won't test them we will just list them as is Oh boy. Now we just got done listing a whole big old thing of Smurfs and now we have a whole big old thing of California raisins. I don't think that there that there is a big market for these. I think we've tried looking them up before. I have sold these though in lots and we did kind of put them together in lots so I might try to list them again. We've got a whole bunch of roller skating raisins. We have some boombox raisins. So what I probably will do is look up sold comps on these and see how other people were listing them. If they were just listing them as one big lot, maybe that would be the way to go. Maybe I can divvy them all up and put a band together because these are saxophone playing ones. These are all the singing ones. This one is a trumpet playing one. So we've got a big girl here in her little heels. We've got surfer raisins. Surfer raisins. They're surfboard. Now this is just the classic dancing raisin. Do you remember these raisins? These were, you had these too, didn't you? I think everybody had. Then we have the sunglasses raisin. Didn't they have some parties? I think they did. They, they might have say. raisin biscuits. Ooh, that sounds so good. I want a raisin biscuit. Here, see if you can see what that says. I'm not going to be able to. Um, 1980 something, but this one's a guitar. I only have one of the guitar raisins. So with bag full of raisins that will, you know, look up and see what, I don't know if they were just lock them up individually in sets. Did you see it? 1988. That sounds about right. 88. So there's a bag of raisins. Then we have a whole bag full of treasures here. Now, some of these are pretty, pretty good, I have to say. These are Migos, I think, are these Migos? Yeah, Migo, M-E-G-O core 1974. I don't know who this guy is. He kind of looks like the chips guy, but look at his head, it's such a different color than his body. Wait a minute, dude, let's fix your leg. Oh, why is, okay, there Twisters. we go. What is this? Articulated, <laughs> articulated? Articulated. Articulated. Anyway, he even has on underpants. He's backward. He is backwards. <laughs> there. Sorry, mister. We'll fix you. I don't know who he is, but we, oh, we have his twin. These are Migos. People do, there are a big collector's market for these Migo boy dolls. They're made in the 70s. I don't know. I'm thinking that he is the chips guy, but he kind of looks like, I know that they sold Fonzies of these and he kind of looks like a Fonzie in the face. I think they just changed the color of their hair, but we have two of these guys. Then we have, and I think this is my, this one was like memory going down memory lane for my husband. We have, is this He-Man? I don't know. I know that this is He-Man. We have He-Man. And I don't know who he is. I don't know He-Man. And then there's this He-Man guy. Do you know this guy? Do you, who's he? I don't know. I don't remember. But this is He-Man. Made, they're made in Hong Kong. What, is, what does he do? Oh, look. He, he lights up. It's like a lighter. When you're oh, looking a lighter. Nice. Okay, Brutus. Seriously. And then he does something, too. What do you do? Same thing, probably. Supposed to. Well, he's supposed to, but He-Man. He-Man figures. I think he's just He-Man. I don't think he does anything, but... But I think that it's good that he has his little... He has got a little velvet vest. Who knew that He-Man wore a velvet vest? He's so stylish. All right. 
All right, let me let Brutus out of it. Then we have all these Hot Wheel cards. Now we have done very, uh, we've done very well. When I say very well, I'm not saying that we're making like hundreds and thousands of dollars on Hot Wheels, but we are readily selling them about every day. So we have some more various ones in here. Now some of these are gonna be straight up trash. Like that one's made in China. That's probably not good. Those are Duke's Hazard. There's a Duke's Hazard. Oh yeah, these are Duke's Hazard. Yep, yeah, it says Hazard County. Well, it's in a little rough shape though. This is Boss Hogg's car. Is that the General Lee? Yeah, but it's in rough shape. Yeah, this is the General Lee, but it, yeah, it is in rough shape. It's missing all the decals on it. And then we have these older cars. Now these you may think are just crapola toys. There is a collector's market for these, but you look at them and you think that they're just trash. But people do collect these. So there's that one. And this one is made, it's a Tootsie toy, made in the USA. This one might be okay. It's its the one that, like, you hit it and it crashes. It's like a little wheelie thing here. It looks good there, and then you hit it and it crashes. It's made by Hot Wheels in 19... 89. That's the nice thing about Hot Wheels too. When you find them, if you look at the bottom, they'll say the date and sometimes the, the brand of the car, who, who the car is. And sometimes the who made it, where it's made matters too. These little guys can do pretty well too. This is a wedge dragster. And again, they look like super cheap, but people do collect these older kind of pre Hot Wheel. Here's another one is another dragster. You know, you never know. Look through those baggies when you're able to go sourcing again. If you're able to go to Goodwill or yard sales, look through the Hot Wheels. If you can get a sack full of Hot Wheels for two dollars at a at a yard sale or Goodwill, then I, I would buy it. Maybe worth it. It it might be worth it. These are full of Transformers. This again is going to have to go by your little chair so you can sit and go through them. I am not going to attempt to take these to make them into their robots because I'll never figure it out again. But there's this guy. Do you remember the some of these were some of, of these are newer. Yeah, a lot of these were newer, but still collectible nonetheless. Here are some littler ones in here. We did at one time find some old ones at Goodwill. Like some original ones. Yes. We also do pretty well with these GPS units. Um, we pick them up at the bins a lot, and we'll sell them for anywhere between $15 and $18 um, on eBay, plus shipping. This one is still in the box. I don't even know. Have you even looked this up? But all the contents are there, so we'll get that listed. And people still do use these old-school GPS units. I, I kind of want to say that it's a lot of it is probably an older person that doesn't use their phone. And they just is what they are used to. And when there's kind of conks out, they're looking for something to replenish it with. This is something that I pull, that I got from the bins. I don't know why. I, it's Bakelite. It's a bolt-a-bit tray made in the USA. It's just a little brown tray. It is Bakelite, though, which is why I got it. I just couldn't leave it in the bins. So I have no idea. It's just brown. It's probably not worth anything. But I couldn't leave it behind. Oh, this is just creepy. I got this from an auction, I know. And the only, the only reason why I wanted the box that this came in was because of who made it. It is missing a little piece, but it's this creepy clown. And it's supposed to have, I think, a thermostat sticker or something there. But it was made by Holt Howard. That's the only reason why I wanted it. And it's kind of odd because you put the screw to mount it to your wall right through his mouth. Anyway, you're creepy. But it's a Holt Howard. So that made it a little bit better. So that'll get listed. I don't know. I mean, it's not going to make me a ton of money. But I do actively look for Holt Howard items. Because they do sell pretty well for me. And I collect it. But I don't collect that one. Alright. Then here's just a box full of goodies. What is this? All things that I got from the bins on one of the trips that we went. Again, I don't know. This is Morris from Nine Lives. Do y'all remember Morris? This was just a promotional thing, but it has 
all the stuff on the inside. It has the pad of paper. It has the, the official Morris pencil. And this is a letter opener. So, I don't know. I just couldn't leave it behind because it's vintage and it has a cat on it. And it's Morris. This next thing... You're welcome. Now go, go lay down. This next thing is something that I also picked up from the bins. I liked it because it has this little leather piece at the top. And it says, it's a little company... Or, love is a little company of two where joy is shared, grief divided, and the road traveled together. Just a little vintage piece, but this piece up here is like a tooled leather, so I thought that was unusual. It has a little hanger there. I don't know. I just can't leave some of these things behind. Then these are little coasters. They are handmade in the Philippines, made by 100% hemp. So they're kind of very boho, little coasters, and there's one, two, three, four. There are six of them, so they're probably all there. They may, Maybe they had a little tray that they went into, but they were really cute. This is the King of the Cowboys. This is a vintage 1950s Roy Rogers scarf. Look at Roy. Look. Roy Rogers, the King of the Cowboys. And it has Trigger and Roy on there. It does have a little hole right there. It says, many happy trails, Roy Rogers and Trigger. So I will steam this and get a picture, good picture of it. And we'll get that one listed on eBay as well. And the last thing I'm going to show in this video, this is going to be the first one of a couple more that I do have of things that I have tucked in at my house. But these, this is a set of vintage Lion King sheets. I have the fitted sheet, 1990s from the original movie, and the flat sheet. I don't, unfortunately, have the pillowcase. I wish that I did. And they are Disney. All right, so that's what I'm going to show you today. And I hope that you did and like this video, and that it entertained you in some way to see what things I've been hoarding in my garage for a while. Some of the stuff will probably do pretty well and some of it may not sell at all or it may not even be worth my time to list it. We'll have to look it up and see. But if you liked this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And I want to thank A Vision and Vintage Co. for sending me the friend mail and Brutus his little treats. He loves them. He's had a, a couple more since then, but I really do appreciate it. And make sure that you go check out her YouTube channel and her Instagram feed. She has a lot of unique and fun things. And she's also in another Indiana girl. So she's an Indiana sister of mine. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.